Steel targets are one of the most misunderstood training tools in the range. From the proper use of them to their functional role in your training, to the safety and potential risks you may experience while using some targets, there are many myths, legends, and blatant lies being spread all over the internet. It's hard to know what is true and what is hearsay. What's worse, you stand on the firing line preparing to send shot after shot, often on steel targets that you know nothing about. How do you know the round that you just sent downrange won't come back at you? What does physics tell us about bullets impacting steel targets? There's a functional, practical, and consistent way to determine if the targets you are shooting are safe and properly designed. This is not opinion. This is data proven over time, backed by repeated analysis and evidence. Steel targets can be incredibly safe and they can also be incredibly dangerous if they are designed poorly. There's a broad misconception about steel targets where people believe that bullets will come back as ricochets, risking the shooters and the bystanders. And there's three reasons why that would not happen if you are shooting a quality target system. So today on the range, the entire objective is to educate you, to show you some proof on video with a little bit of a science experiment that Brenton created over here. We're gonna dispel the myth that bullets will come back and hit you when you're shooting a steel target. And the reality is if you are shooting a quality steel target system, that will not be the case. And we're gonna talk about that after we shoot through our little science experiment over here. But before I get into that, what I want to do is explain some of those traits that you're gonna see in a quality steel target. So right here is our reduced C zone target system. This is in the ADAP family of our line of targets on the Exodus side of our website. What you're gonna notice about this target system, we've got a very high quality steel target plate. We've also got an aggressive lean angle and it's got movement when it's struck. And we'll talk about why all of those things are important, but you couple that with a great high quality hanging mechanism, a good post and a quality base, and we can dispel the myth that bullets are gonna come back and hit you. But what I really wanted to show you guys is the science experiment that Brenton created that I think is gonna give you guys the data that you need. This is simply the exact same target I just talked about, covered in cardboard. Top, bottom, sides, everywhere, even on the front. So what we're gonna be doing here is shooting some rounds through the cardboard, and then we're gonna come down range and analyze the fragmentation pattern, where it's concentrated, and then I'm gonna hopefully give you guys information that helps you make better decisions on the range, no matter what target systems you are shooting. This is also going to help you all identify what makes a quality target system a quality target system. Let's start off first with nine millimeter and check out the results. I'm at 10 yards right now from the arts and crafts target downrange. I'm gonna put one round of 115 grain nine millimeter on the target and we'll go down and check it out. Let's go see what science has in store for us. Nice. That is incredible. So right here, we can see that's actually not any cardboard coming out. That was from the impact. Bullet impacts, absolutely nothing on the front of the plate. What we can see on the sides here, you can see most of that fragmentation coming out. And we'll explain at the end why that's happening, but you can see some fragmentation exiting. I'm gonna flip the bottom up right here so we can see you've got more damage on the bottom because most of the fragmentation is gonna go down. Now, a common misconception that people have is that nothing can go up, but the reality is there is some fragmentation that will follow the plane of that target plate. Again, I'll explain in depth at the end of the video. You'll see a little bit of light fragmentation up here. That's not a danger to a shooter. What would be a danger to a shooter is if we have a bullet hole here and you've got huge chunks coming straight back but there's physics at play here, and I wanna explain that to you guys so you have some educational points to remember as you're shooting steel targets. But that was nine millimeter, let's go step it up. I've got my Glock 20 here, this is a 10 millimeter. I've got 180 grain jacketed hollow point. This is just standard defensive ammunition. I'm gonna put one round on target. We're gonna see what it looks like. Let's go down and check it out. First, clear this guy out. Okay. So you can see that hole is one millimeter bigger than that one because it's 10 millimeter. But as we see, perfectly clear on the front of the plate. Up top, 
Again, you'll have a little bit of peppering. I'll talk about that at the end. You're gonna see some coming out to the sides, but what you're mostly gonna see is that bottom. The bottom is where that fragmentation gets directed down to. And you'll see on this side, it did get a little bit more torn up than the other. But that's 10 millimeter jacketed hollow points. I have bear loads for 10 millimeter. I wanna put around on target, let's go do that. So I've got Underwood 220 grain hard cast lead ammunition. This is like a bear defense or big game kind of defense bullet. On the box, it says it's going 1200 feet per second. I don't know how fast it is out of this pistol, but I know they're potent. Let's put one on target. Holy crap. Dude, every time I shoot these, I remember this is what a 10 millimeter is supposed to feel like. So let's go down range, that's cleared out. All right. So once again, nothing on the front, nothing's coming out. We've got, uh, that's the hole from the, the bear defense load. You're gonna see consistently up top, in line with the plate, you'll have a little bit. As we move down the sides, you're gonna get a whole lot more, especially, once again, we're gonna show you the bottom. You can see how that bear load just sent that fragmentation down off the plate, out the bottom. I'm gonna have to retape that up because we got more stuff to look at. But that's 10 millimeter with bear loads. I think we should grab a rifle and do the same thing. So you might be wondering right now, okay, cool, Jared, we saw it at the bottom and the sides, but there is some fragmentation coming off the top. Doesn't that prove that the fragmentation's coming back to the shooter? The answer is no, it does not. I wanna explain some physics to you guys. So whenever you have anything impact a flat plane like this, there is a law in place here where the bullet will follow the plane of the object, fragmentation I should say, will follow the plane of the object that it's striking. This is true even going up. Now because of that forward move, movement and the way that that is going to send the fragmentation and, and basically transfer that momentum and energy of that fragmentation down to the ground, probably 90, 95% of that's going right down to the ground. You'll see a line in the dirt, it's perfectly safe. You will have some residual that follows the vertical plane of that target plate. This has been tested extensively over the years and what's been proven is bullet fragmentation stays in line with the plane and the maximum deflection that it's going to have, assuming you have a smooth target plate made of quality steel, is about a 10 to 12 degree angle. So if you look from the side here, a 10 to 12 degree angle if you take the vertical plane and you look at my hand, that's what we're looking at. If you follow our distance recommendations, that is never a problem. But that is why sometimes when you're shooting steel targets, depending on the caliber that you're shooting and the volume of fire, you could hear gentle rain of lead falling down. And that's what that is. It's not a safety hazard, but it's a reality of the physics in play. That is not something that you have to be concerned about unless you are shooting sketchy steel but that's not what we're doing today. So let's get back to shooting. So now we're back at 10 yards. I've got my 16 inch 556. I'm gonna shoot one round on the target plate. We're gonna inspect again. One thing to keep in mind, this is way closer than recommended. Please don't do this. Follow the distance recommendations. Even though shots like this show you how safe our systems are, just follow the instructions. Okay, let's go check it out. All right, so 5.56, five, we've got the hole going in there. Like the other ones, you get a little bit of fragmentation on the top. Most of that fragmentation, you're gonna have down the side here and on the bottom. So that's 5.56 five, on the target plate. Oh man, Brenton, I'm so tempted to do 300 wind mag. Like 300 wind mag at 25 yards. 20, all right, whatever. Don't do this at home. Guys, we were kidding. We're not gonna be at 20 yards shooting this 300 Winchester Magnum. We're around 60 yards, still closer than recommended. Got 150 grain Federal Power Shock ammunition. And we've chronographed this ammo out of my rifle going about 3,300 feet per second. We actually have a whole video talking about this kind of ammo against our steel, and you should check that out on our YouTube channel. But I'm gonna put one round on target, then we're gonna go down range and inspect it.
Let's go check it out. So two things, I shot really low on this target plate because I wanna show you guys a couple different things that you're gonna see when you're shooting steel targets. The other thing is we've got an angle finder here. So what I first wanna show you is if we set this target at zero degrees, see how it's level there? Hopefully you can see on camera, but it's at zero degrees and we go out to that 10 to 12 degrees, you can see how far that fragmentation can actually go off the plane of the steel. And if you look at what came through the front here, it's all going up. So again, somebody might look at that and be like, well, fragmentation's coming back to the shooter, but that's not what's happening. So now this was able to show you this because 300 wind mag at about 50, 60 yards with ammo that is way faster than recommended at that distance. I mean, we should have been out at about 160 to 175 yards with that velocity to be at an approved distance. It is a thick jacket, so you naturally are gonna have more time that it takes to dissipate that fragmentation. You'll have more energy that's getting transferred into the plate. You're gonna have more movement of that plate. But what that showcases to you guys is all that fragmentation, again, is following that plane of that target plate within that zero to about 12 degrees. So as crazy as that is, and as much energy as that is with the 300 Win Mag, the reality is even if I was standing 15 feet away, none of that would be able to hit me. But that doesn't make it safe for us to stand at that distance because what happens is, and why we create these distance standoffs, is we are creating distances that make it possible for bullets to engage the steel without damaging it. When you shoot too fast of a bullet at a target too close, it can create craters. And those craters are what can actually send legitimate chunks of lead back to shooters, jackets, things like that. So while what we were doing was technically unsafe, it's a controlled environment, we've built these systems, done the engineering, we know how they work, it showcases you some valuable information. So above all else, if a steel target is designed properly, you can expect high performance from it. But let's go over to the other target system. I'm gonna explain that engineering. I promised at the beginning of the video that I would give you three reasons why bullets are not going to be bouncing back at you if you're shooting a quality steel target system. So those three things are a quality steel target plate. What I mean by that is you have to have a known quality source of steel. The minimum, absolute minimum is AR500 steel. Our high-end systems on the Exodus side of our website are produced out of a very, very, very high quality AR550 steel that is held to ridiculously exact tolerances. And that's one of the reasons they have such high performance. So if you've got a quality steel target plate and it is free from defects, from bullet pass-throughs, holes, craters, things like that, a nice smooth surface, high quality steel, that's the first thing that you're looking for. The second would be an, uh, uh, <clears throat> this can be a cut. The second would be a steep forward lean. Now, a target plate that's perfectly up and down does not necessarily mean that it is unsafe, but it is less than ideal. We don't want to have target plates straight up and down because then they have to absorb the full energy and impact of that round hitting the steel target. And as we discussed, if there is no forward lean, what happens as that bullet impacts all of it goes out in a 360 degree fan at that 12 to zero to 12, 15 degrees that we were talking about. That's again, doesn't necessarily mean that it's unsafe. It's less than ideal. We don't want that. So our systems you're gonna see are gonna have a forward lean. Our Genesis line of targets has a fixed forward lean. The Exodus line of our steel targets can have adjustable lean and you can run super steep angles with those target plates. And that is going to help absorb the energy of the bullet. Again, as the bullet impacts, the plate moves. That's slowing down all of that energy. You're transferring the energy of the bullet's movement into a 30 pound plate moving, dissipates all that energy. And then you're also steepening that angle as the bullet's fragmenting, which is again, directing more of that down to the ground. So the last thing then would be movement when struck. So those two things, the forward lean and the ability to move when struck would round out those three. All of those three things combined mean that you are going to have a safe steel target system, one that's not going to shoot back at you, one that you can shoot safely, confidently, and you can train to become a better provider and protector. But there is a fourth aspect of steel targets, and it's sort of a bonus that I wanna throw at you guys. And the fourth thing is, all of your bracketry should be behind the target system. 
I see so many target systems where things wrap around the front of the plate and basically you've got mild steel soft brackets, things like that. You've got to have a high quality mount like our ADAP top bracket. You need to have a rigid post, something that holds it up unless you have certain other target systems, which I can't talk about right now, but you'll hear about later in the future. You need to have a stable base. If you've got a good mount, you've got a quality plate, you've got the forward lean, you've got movement when struck, and you've got a quality, stable base. You have a safe target system, something that you can be confident with training in. But the reality is it's very, very, very difficult for you to tell when you just show up on a range whether or not the targets downrange are safe, but there is one way that you can guarantee that they're going to be safe and high performance. That is to check out our website. And I know that sounds like a major shameless plug. And you know what? It is because I care about you. I care about you training to a higher standard, but I care about you training in a safe way as well. I don't want people shooting junk steel, trash they found laying around because people die from that kind of stuff and it's not worth the risk. Your eyeballs, your life, your jugular, your limbs, your arms, and your safety are worth investing in. So if you want to guarantee that you're going to have a high performance system, please check out our website, tatargets.com. If you don't want to buy our stuff, that's fine. Hopefully the video is still helpful to you. But if you do want to support what we're doing and you want to have a known system, that's where you can find them. The Genesis line is great for beginners. They're a very budget entry level target system. They are domestic AR500 steel. Get a lot of bang for your buck with that. I recommend the T-Post bracket and our reduced C-Zone plate or the hybrid reduced C-Zone plate. Amazing target plates and they're super inexpensive. You can't go wrong with that. If you are a high volume shooter like me, you like to shoot closer distances with rifles and you have machine guns, lots of your buddies shoot together, I recommend the Exodus line of steel targets. They are in 3 8 inch and half inch AR550. The half inch AR550 has a lifetime warranty on it. Find that anywhere else. And that means if you use it properly and it fails, you email our team, send some photos, and we send you a new plate. Super simple. We have your back because you've supported us. Nobody else is doing that. So please check out all that stuff. And let me know if this video is helpful. Did it wake you up to something? Did it show you something new? And did you learn something? And if you did, comment, come, come and comment down below. Comment down below if you learned something. And like, subscribe, share the video. We'll see you all in the next one.